is no big fan of gel moisturizer because they're not enough for it. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Scarlett Cool. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Happy holidays. Welcome to the first episode in my series of yearly favorites. So I'm gonna be posting a few videos about my yearly favorites. They're gonna go out as I edit them. Uh, I want them ready by Christmas, but unfortunately I was um, too tired and I needed to take some time for myself, so I haven't been able to film and prepare videos or edit. So that's why we're doing them now, and they're gonna be released whenever. And yeah, as you probably noticed in the title, this is the skincare favorite for 2020. I'm gonna do a makeup one in English as well. And I think I'm gonna do like a random things like uh, music, um, clothes, stuff, pro in French, cause it's a bit more miscellaneous. I will be sectioning into the different uh, product types and I will put timestamps so you should be able to see chapters in like the YouTube feature thing so you can skip to the part you want. You can also skip this intro, obviously. If this is your first time on my channel, hi, welcome. My name is Armand. I love cruelty-free makeup, skincare, and also carrot cake. I don't really like carrot cake. And my partner made a very, very good one over Christmas, so. So if you like any of these things or combination of these themes, then feel free to subscribe for more similar content. Uh, let's get started. Oh, and everything is cruelty-free to the best of my knowledge. Some products are on the Logical Harmony cruelty-free list, and everything will be listed in my description as usual, as I always do. Cool, let's get started. I've got notes this time because I prepared my video, which is really unusual for me. I should do that more often, I think. I avoid making 40 minutes long videos. Let's start with cleansers and we're gonna start with all cleansing we're gonna do in the steps that I apply uh, my skincare. So let's start with this. This is the Pareto from Green Cleansing Oil. This is a cleansing oil. So this is meant as a first step cleanser rather than the second. I like double cleansing. I really like this cleansing oil. It takes off the makeup very effortlessly. I think I'm not gonna repeat that one because I already repeat like five times and I can't I can't be bothered, sorry. It emulsifies in like that kind of slightly liquidy milky texture, which I really like when you want to kind of apply all over your face and then you go in with a little bit of water to emulsify. I like doing that when I cleanse uh, with oil. Uh, and what I really like about this one is it doesn't gather in my bed. Uh, I use the Dior Claire's the Black Dip Cleansing Oil and it emulsified can kind of created like these kind of bits into my bed which I absolutely heat it uh, to scrap off. That was really nasty. This one didn't do that. I think it does a fantastic job. I don't think it doesn't really have a scent. It smells a bit like olive oil, but it's not like perfumed in any way. It's just fantastic. And uh, I think that's gonna become my kind of solid oil cleanser. Next up, we'll go into like uh, more water-based cleansers, which are like second step if you're doing like a double cleanse method. If you know, it's just kind of usual cleansers. So this is the Milk Makeup Vegan Milk Cleanser. Um, I just really like this cleanser just because it's kind of a very solid uh, no first cleanser. It just does exactly what I need it to. I think it's a very good balance of very cleansing while being non-stripping. And I just really like the experience of using it because when you mix it with water, it kind of leathers into that nice, not foamy texture, but more like a yeah, lather, like a moisturizing lather. So I really like that. Uh, I don't know if it's really worth the price, but I just keep going back to it just because I think it's just works so well for my skin. On top of that, uh, I just love a transparent squeezy tube packaging. The color is so cool, obviously, but besides that, it's just very practical because you can really get through the entire thing and see where you are. I think it's just a very well designed <laughs> packaging for once. And I'm definitely someone that really likes having a product that works well and, and whose user experience is good. So I really like this packaging enhances product and that's why I keep buying it because it's easy to travel with and just use in general. So this is the Beauty Bay uh, Super Jelly Cleansing Gel uh, from Beauty Bay's own brand, which is very, very affordable. I think that's like six pounds, maybe seven. I think it's 650. 
And it's a very, very good no fuss cleanser. Uh, it's kind of that lightweight gel lotion consistency. It doesn't form up or anything. So when you mix it with water, it just kind of uh, becomes more liquidy. What I really like about this is uh, contrary to the milk makeup, I think it's really nice to use as well as a first step cleanser. So let's say I'm not, I haven't, I just wore sunscreen for the day, maybe a tiny bit of concealer. I don't really like using an oil dress for that, so I might just use this. It's really nice to use on the dry skin. While the milk one is kind of a bit odd because it's quite that thick thing, so it's not as pleasant to use without water, I find. What I think is great, it's very, very affordable and you can sometimes get on sale for like four pounds. It's ridiculous. I think it's a great beginner uh, friendly cleanser or for someone that maybe is looking for no fuss cleanser. I think that works well in that instance, basically. Let's move on into toners and hydration. And this year I think has been a, a great discovering for me in terms of uh, skincare. First of all, I think I got a lot more serious about my skincare uh, this year. So I definitely made some big changes and added like serums and things. Um, and something I did is also start using some Korean skincare products. And mainly what I really discovered that I really like is Korean toners. So I'm gonna um, mention this one even though I'm not sure if I will keep buying it. Uh, I'll explain a bit after why, but this is my first Korean toner and it made me fall in love with Korean toners in general. And I just find it difficult using other products for hydration that uh, Korean toners because I, I just think they're fantastic. So I didn't say what it was. This is the Perito Santa La Green Level Calming Toner. This is a hydrating toner. I'm, uh, I need to be specific about this. I don't have any exfoliating toners. If you're looking for a toner, make sure that you check what time because I sometimes read reviews of people that get an exfoliating toner. I like what the hell this irritated my skin. I thought it was supposed to hydrate it make sure that you check what type of toners it is because there are different types. Anyway, these are only hydrating toners. As I said, it has a bit of a place in my heart because in my first Korean, it is my first Korean toner. So this is a toner that is packed with Santella Asiatica, which is uh, an ingredient that is very popular in Korean skincare and that is starting to make its way into more Western Occidental skincare. So we st start seeing that appearing. It's a very soothing, healing ingredient which is why it's so popular in Korean skin, which is very centered around soothing and hydrating and all these things. Um, so it has loads of this, hence the naming green bottle and all that. Uh, what I really like about this is, um, this is a scented toner. It does have essential oil. Uh, I think it's mostly rose and bergamot, if I'm not mistaken. It gives it a very, very nice smell that doesn't smell synthetic. I do really enjoy the experience of the smell, but I'm trying to get away from essential oil, so that's why I'm kind of not sure if I'll keep using it once I'm done with that bottle. So this does contain witch hazel extract, which is an estrogen, so it works well getting rid of bacteria on the skin. Uh, which uh, I know is kind of a demonized ingredient because people are worried it might dry out for skin. It is in a toner, so it shouldn't be an issue, but I'm wondering if that's maybe why it doesn't work as great for my skin that the next toner I'm gonna mention. Because of the way it's formulated and we ha which has on the Central Asiatica, which is great at soothing, and because it's also a toner that really penetrates the skin very fast and doesn't leave a very strong hydration residue on the skin, I think this would be very well suited for like a noily, combo and maybe acne prone uh, skin type because of the soothing aspect it will work well with the acne and the witch hazel would help balance that as well but maybe for drier skin type you might prefer the next one which I'm gonna uh, mention which is why I'm kind of I have a new favorite which I prefer over this one. I did buy the uh, unscented version that they released, which is essential oil free and which has oil free. So I will keep you updated on this as soon as I start um, using it, if you're interested. So yeah, it's still a very good toner. Now, the love of my life in toners, the Dear Claire's Supple Preparation Unscented Toner. Uh, so again, this is the unscented version. There's a scented version with essential oil. This one doesn't have that. 
I love this toner and honestly each time that I finish a bowl and I stop using it and then I start using it again I'm just fascinated at how much it does for my skin which is surprising because toners are really meant for just hydration mostly and they, they're not gonna do too much for your skin compared to something more packed in ingredients like an essence or serum but this each time I use it it's just so good how how good my skin looks. I, f I feel like it really helps healing uh, maybe breakouts I had and kind of uh, brighten my skin, but it's also so hydrating. It just, I really love this toner besides like, I would say of not even looking at the ingredient list, personally, I feel like it actually does something. Um, so in terms of uh, the ingredient and claims, it doesn't have too much claims. It kind of says it's a toner that is meant to prepare your skin for the next step. So it's meant to be just hydration and stuff. When you look at the ingredient list, if you compare it to the Pareto one, it's a more well-rounded ingredient list uh, where you get lots of soothing ingredients but not just the centella asiatica so in here you have centella asiatica but you also have aloe vera extract which is known for its hydration and uh, also soothing panthenol which i think there is in the uh Pareto one it contains licorice extract which is uh, both soothing but also a little bit brightening if you have any dark spots from breakouts i just i i really love this uh, toner it just hydrates so much um Again, if you have what to compare with a, with a Proto one, I think this is probably more for like a combo dry or dry normal skin type because it does uh, stay on the skin a bit longer. So it's a bit more hydrating and it's a bit more soothing. While the Proto one is probably a bit more suited for like an oilier skin type. So fantastic toner, probably one of my biggest favorite, probably my favorite of the year of skincare if I had to choose one. Uh, let's move on to serum and we're gonna start with some exfoliating serums. So to start, we'll go the Ordinary uh, Lactic Acid 5% plus Hyaluronic Acid. So this is an exfoliating serum, let's say it together. Exfoliating serum. So lactic acid is an AHA as opposed to a BHA which is a, a different types of uh, exfoliating uh, acids. Lactic acid is definitely not as potent as glycolic acid can be. So it's really good if you have a bit more of a sensitive skin like I do. Um, what I really like about um, lactic acid is I find it to be a slightly hydrating uh, exfoliant. So I find that when I use it, I don't feel as dried out as if I were to use a different types of acids. Because it's a 5%, it's not very irritating, but at the same time, I feel like it doesn't do wonders for your skin, like maybe a more potent one would. They have a 10% version. I think this is meant to be more of a step stone, if you say that in English. Uh, to start exfoliating, but not like completely destroying your skin. So your skin can build up tolerance using that, uh, that acid. Uh, I've been able to build up to using three times a week. Uh, four, if I use two days in a row, it's a bit too much. I can feel a bit tingling. It's okay, but it's not like gray. But I think it definitely helped build up tolerance for my skin. So I also feel because it's exfoliating, obviously it helped a little bit with breakout. If I had some breakouts, I feel like they were able to kind of uh, pushed away a bit faster but again I, I don't consider for my skin exfoliant usually don't do wonders because my skin is a bit more sensitive so it's difficult to use a potent one that will actually make a difference uh, because of that sensitivity <laughs> if that makes sense. Another exfoliating acid we have is uh, the one I'm currently using so this is the ordinary mandelic acid 10% plus hyaluronic acid um, so mandelic acid has quite a bigger molecular weight than uh, glycolic acid and lactic acid, which means it doesn't penetrate as deep into the skin. So it might not be, again, as potent as the one I just mentioned, but it's going to be great if your skin is a lot more sensitive, but you still want to use uh, exfoliating acid. This one is really, really good. I never used mandelic acid before. And I was really surprised that absolutely no tingling even the very first time I used it. And I'm pretty sure I could use it every night if I wanted. 
a more wet sketch with my skin barrier when using exfoliating ingredients like this, but I was I could probably use it every night without an issue. It definitely again helped a bit with breakouts. Um, the consistency I'm not as much of a fan of as the lactic acid one. The lactic acid one is quite liquidy, while this one has almost an oily finish. So I find that uh, I cannot use it before my hydrating toners, which is usually what I do. So I usually cleanse, use my hydrating toner, and then use this, which is not always my favorite order. Doesn't matter too much, but I just find it, it works best for me like this. Nice clear all exfoliating uh, acids. Now let's move on into uh, more regular serums. So this is the Inkyless Niacinamide uh, Serum. Huge discovery for me with the Inkyless this year. I started using them this year, as well as the Ordinary because I got more serious about my skincare. Um, but the Inkyless is definitely my favorite. Um, it's a shame it's not on the Logical Harmony uh, list yet. I hope it's gonna be. From what I could read, it, it is cruelty free. What I really like about the Inky List is I feel like they're a lot more beginner friendly than The Ordinary is. I find The Ordinary way too overwhelming for someone that is just beginning skincare. While I feel like The Inky List explains so well and there's so much information on their website, at the same time they, they have the same approach, which is just giving a star ingredient uh, as the name of a product. But the products are more well-rounded, so it's not just that ingredient, it's also other things that are gonna support this ingredient. So I feel like not only the formulation are more well-rounded than the ordinary, but they also, um, you learn as you use them. So you kind of like, oh, I know now what niacinamide is for. Well, I feel like the ordinary is really difficult to build uh, a skincare routine from their products. Even though they offer like the information, I find it really difficult. On top of that, when you get an inky list product, you can open the box it comes in and you got lots of information about what sort of ingredients you can pair it with, what it's meant to be used as, how to use it. I think it's just so, so beginner friendly. I highly recommend the inky list. Anyway, just closing that part of this is uh, going back to the inky list. So this is the inky list niacinamide serum, as I mentioned. Um, so niacinamide is, uh, some people call it a superstar ingredient because it's supposed to be great for all skin types. It's definitely good for a normally or combo skin type because it's gonna help regulate that sebum production and reduce breakouts. But overall also for the skin types it's gonna help reduce uh, redness and uh, improve skin health and skin barrier because it's, an ingredient used for fortifying the skin, basically. My own experience with this is I definitely feel like it reduced breakouts quite a bit. And overall, I feel like my skin is a lot stronger now that I start using this product on a daily basis. Uh, I just feel like my skin can take it more exfoliation or retinol or active ingredients in general. It's just feels healthier. I also feel like it helped brighten a bit my skin, but also reduce redness quite a bit, I feel. And I feel like my skin looks better thanks to it. And what I really like about this formulation is it's actually formulated for all skin types. So it has a bit more of a like hydrating ingredients. While uh, The Ordinary also has a niacinamide serum, but it has zinc in it, which is meant to be a very oil controlling ingredient. So they definitely formulated it towards oily skin types. It's not easy to find niacinamide actually formulated for all the skin types in mind, even though that ingredient is very good for skin types. I don't know if that makes sense, but this is my second bowl. I just keep buying it, it's my solid good one. Another serum I enjoy from the Inky List is the 15% Vitamin C NEGF Serum. That's a mouthful. So as the name suggests, it's a Vitamin C Serum. Uh, the first one I've been using, uh, so I think the most popular form of vitamin C you can find and probably the most potent has the most studies around is the L-ascorbic acid, if I'm not mistaken. This one doesn't contain that, it contains a derivative from it, which is a lot more stable, but not as potent. So I think it's a great entry level vitamin C serum. Uh, if you are again sensitive like I am, this didn't cause much irritation, just a little bit if I used it a bit too much, but overall I didn't have any irritation issue with this one. Uh, on the other hand, I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like it was super like brightening like they suggest it is. 
uh, it's hard for me to say if my skin has been uh, if my skin has been brightened. To be fair, uh, because I'm so pale, I don't know. I feel like maybe if you uh, dip your skin tone, maybe you have more discoloration and stuff, so it might be easier to see these things. For me, I don't really notice that, but I did find it to give a slight glow. This was also recommended from the Inky List when I asked them about possible ingredients that might help with Melia, which I get a lot naturally. I wonder if it didn't help my skin not create as much Melia. I'm not sure. I'll keep you updated on, uh, again, I'll keep you updated on Melia because I'm trying loads of different products to see if I can help control that and I really hope I can make a video about it. Anyway, I still think it's a very good entry level uh, vitamin C serum. So I think it's a great little morning serum. That's how I used it. Uh, just, you know, good skin, get started. And finally, to finish on serum, we've got the Ordinary Retinol 0.2% in Squalane. I love this. This is so good. <laughs> if you are scared of retinol, try this. I've, 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 I don't know what to say, man. It's... I don't know why I love it so much. It's just... I don't know if it does great things for my skin because retinol is also about preventing anti-aging and because it's such a low percentage, I don't know if it's gonna do much. But what I find great about the ordinary is I find that they really nail down a good retinol formulation and products in general. Because they got three retinols, if I'm not mistaken, with different concentration, they all are in square So I think there's 0.2%, there's 0.5, and there's 1%. Uh, which is the strongest. And what I really like is, because you can get such a low percentage, and on top of that, it is in squalane, squalane works as a buffer, so you won't get that crazy irritation you get from staying retinol, you won't get flaking, uh, uh, your skin peeling off, all the scary things that may happen with retinol, I didn't get using this. And I do have normal sensitive skin that can get a bit more dry at times. Squalene is lovely and this, this just works so well. I love this. Um, and you, because of the squalene, you actually wake up more with like your skin still a bit like, oil. not oily, but still like, you know, it's just plump and it still has a bit of oil on it. I just love that personally when I, uh, waking up like this, maybe not your dream as an oily person. I know also oily people would love this because squalene is a great oil for oily people. So if you, if you want to get some retinol, get this because it's very affordable. And it's just, I think it's a very, they're very, well for I had to put out retinols for people. And I think it, again, as just as the lactic acid one, these are meant to be step stones. You'll probably get more noticeable results once you get into these higher percentages, but this works well as like, doop, 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 you know, climbing stairs, pirouette, cacahuette. Also this and the niacinamide serum, Chef's kiss. Niacinamide is a great ingredient as a support for retinol because it's gonna help protect your skin from the retinol. So if you're scared, get these two serums and you'll be happy. Let's move on to moisturizers. I'm gonna go through moisturizers in order of thickness. So starting from the more lightweight gel-like to the thicker night drier skin type. I haven't had a lot of luck with the Inky List uh, moisturizers. I tried quite a few and I, most of them I didn't find them to be hydrating enough or moisturizing enough. This one though, I did really enjoy. Sorry, I cut it in half. This is the Snow Mushroom uh, moisturizer from the Inky List. So what I really like about this is um, has no snow mushroom, which is having an ingredient you might see more of in 2021. Uh, which is meant to be kind of a very moisturizing and kind of cooling uh, ingredient. So the focus of this product is to be a very a quite moisturizing uh, cooling gel moisturizer. And uh, that's how I would describe it. Uh, it's very lightweight, but still moisturizing. So I, I find that for the day, as a someone that usually is not a big fan of gel moisturizer because they're not enough for it. <laughs> No. This one was enough. Uh, it's pretty nice. Um, it's a, I think it's a good 
lightweight moisturizer, cooling, maybe. I was not really kind of like, oh my God, it's so cooling, but I did use it over kind of September time. So maybe in summer, maybe more cooling. It's as cooling as like a gel moisturizer might feel cooling, if that makes sense. I didn't find it to be like pink mint on my face. It's supposed to help reduce redness. I don't know if it did, maybe. Uh, but it's nice. I would probably use it again as a daily moisturizer. I, I quite like that for that. Also good for like, uh, as a base for makeup. If you want maybe a moisturizer that doesn't interact too much with your makeup, you just want something that's kind of neutral and just kind of like moisturizing, but not too much. That works well for that. The second moisturizer we have is the Deep Sea Pure Water Cream Moisturizer from Pareto. What I really like about this, it's so, so good. The reason why is because it's so moisturizing while being so lightweight, it's probably as moisturizing as the next ones I'm gonna mention, but it, this is more lightweight. You can use it during the day, no problem at all. You can use it at night. It's just very, very good moisturizer. So it's made with a uh, deep sea water, which is meant to be a very skin identical ingredient, which is why it's so nicely absorbed by the skin. It's so moisturizing. This contains your usual good moisturizing ingredients. Hyaluronic acid, there's panthenol as well, which is very, very nice as for moisture and soothing and building up skin barrier. This also has a little bit of niacinamide, which is great for brightening again, strengthening your skin barrier. And this is the unscented version. I think they reformulated it so it doesn't have a such an oil it used to. Uh, but yeah, this is the one without it. It's so, so good. Only thing is, this is not the cheapest moisturizer I have. It's like around 20 quid. Uh, but I do really, really enjoy it, so I do tend to buy it every now and then as a little treat. Let's move on to my huge favorite of this year. This is the Beauty Bear First Class Moisturizer. Uh, I love this moisturizer. This is my favorite moisturizer. Do you know why? Because it's very moisturizing has oats extract in it, so it feels very soothing. It kind of leaves the skin ever so slightly oily, which I really like because my skin likes that. It's It works in the evening as a thicker moisturizer. It also works in the morning if you have more of a normal to dry skin type. And because it leaves that oily kind of slightly oily finish. It just gives you beautiful glow, which means you don't have to use a foundation to make your skin look good. Did I mention it has oats? I think I did, it's very soothing. I'm sorry, I love oats. Let me feel my oats. I'm feeling my oats, let me feel my oats. It also has niacinamide, which is great uh, in a moisturizer to kind of uh, help strengthen your skin barrier and regulate oil production. Finally, the best part, this is like, I don't know, it's definitely under 10 pounds. I wonder if it's not like seven. I managed to get, get it on sale for like £3.50 or £4. There's so much product in this. This is 90 milliliters. This is a huge jar. It's so far the way. That's exactly what I want the moisturizer. That's exactly what I want. I just want it to work, moisturize, and not be crazy expensive because I don't need like an extremely fancy moisturizer. I mean, that's just, maybe that's just me, but I'd rather spend money into my serums, into my cleansers, into my tuners. Final moisturizers that I really enjoy this year. This is the Milk Makeup Vegan Milk Moisturizer. Love the packaging. Let's just appreciate that for a second, please. Now, packaging aside, I think it's a bit overpriced because I think it's going into like the 33, if not 36 pounds. And already for skincare in general, that becomes, it seems to become a bit much for me. For moisturizer, it's quite a lot. It's the thickest moisturizer of the three. I feel like it does moisturize very well. If you have very dry skin, it might work. It's a blend of different vegan milks. So I think there's oats, there's uh, things from like the desert that's supposed to hold lots of hydration. That's the whole branding around this moisturizer. What I really like about this is because it doesn't have niacinamide, I like using on my exfoliation night. It might be odd, but I'm not sure how much of that is true. It probably doesn't matter too much, but when I'm using an exfoliant, I try not to use other ingredients that might affect the pH level of the exfoliant because it might uh, affect its uh, efficiency. 
It's something I kind of read. I was not sure if you could use Nasama with uh, an exfoliating things. It might be fine. I'm sure it's pretty fine. It's just me. I don't know. It's just, you know, in my head. But anyway, I think it's it's great for that. And that's how I use it. A bit complain. I find that the jar is very big and quite bulky, which I mean, it's nice to kind of give it that luxurious feel, but like the jar inside is like tiny. It's just like you get like maybe 40 millimeters, not even 50. So the jar is like the same size as the beauty bit one. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You could get twice as much product. No, do something about this. It's just kind of ridiculous. I, I, like you either need to put more product or reduce the price because I think it's a bit unfair. In my opinion, sorry, I don't mean to call you out though. If you may, if I can talk to you directly, I mean, obviously. Sunscreen, we're almost finished. Yeah. Let's start with big discoveries of this year for me are Korean sunscreen. They are fantastic. I know they're under a bit of controversy because uh, we're not sure if they actually are the SPF that they indicate on their box. Because they are a lighter consistency, I, I think there's a lot of like controversy around it, but uh, Lab Beauty Muffin made a very, very interesting video explaining the process of testing SPF for sunscreen and how biased that thing is, but it's also like we're not comparing the same thing and it's it's very interesting. I'll, I'll link it there if you want. Anyway, this is the Dioclair Soft Air UV Essence, another Dioclair's product. Um, I tried this later on after the other one I'm gonna mention after. And at first I was like, oh, I'm not sure because it's scented. I think it has essential oil in it. I'm not a big fan of that. I wish it was not scented. It's not, it's not too overpowering. It's just a slight kind of citrusy smell. I'm not quite sure, but it doesn't linger. It's not too bad, but please let's stop with scented sunscreen. We don't want that. Uh, but I love this. This is so, so good because it's so, 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 so lightweight. Uh, I've used it throughout the summer until like the beginning of autumn. I think that's where I finished it. I just think it's great for that purpose. It's just a very good sunscreen that you cannot feel on your skin. It just uh, spreads very easily. I think this is great if you want something more lightweight or if you have maybe an oily skin type, you don't want to feel something thick on your skin. What I love is it just spreads in no time. There's no white cast, the consistency is so glidey and airy. I love this. Uh, but yeah, essential oil is really scented. That's the only thing. Take less. A scented version, please. Second to last product after that, we are done. The second sunscreen is the Purito Santella Green level and scented sun. for oh guy. This one compared to the Dio Claire's, the one before, I would say has a little more body. It's a bit more thick. It takes a bit more time to spread. But the reason for that is because it does have moisturizing agents in there. So it's a great, great uh, sunscreen if you have a, maybe a drier skin type and you want a bit more moisture for your skin throughout the day. It's great for winter as well. Uh, no white cast as well, it definitely, you need to work it a bit more because it's slightly thicker, but it definitely gets into a place where you don't get any white cast. I've been, I'm pretty pale, so I'm probably not the best person to kind of judge on the white cast of a sunscreen. If you want to get a review that talks more about the cast, you're probably best following a skincare enthusiast or content creator that has a deeper skin tone than I do, obviously, because... I mean, a very good, very good sense. That's kind of my goal to that and to stock up on. I'm probably gonna use more of the Dioclas as well. I need to buy another bowl. Finally, we've got a wee bonus, uh, which I almost forgot to mention, but actually I have been really enjoying using this. This is the Milk Makeup Melatonin Overnight Lip Mask. Yes. So again, can we appreciate the packaging? It's so cute. I don't know if it's worth the price, but it's good. So this is, just a good lip mask. It's probably like expenses fascinating if we're honest, except that it's cruelty free and it smells good and it's nice to use. I apply this to obviously go to sleep. The melatonin I think is a bit gimmicky. I don't know if it does anything, but it smells slightly like lavender, which I find very soothing, kind of calming for the night. I do really like that smell. Uh, just FYI, if you're sensitive to lavender. I find this scent to be quite faint. It's kind of... Yeah, I find the smell to be kind of faint. It's a little bit of a lavender, but it smoothly smells a bit like, I don't know, like petroleum jelly, really. 
And it's just, I don't know, you wake up and you, you, your lips are so moisturized. I also said using this, uh, if I'm gonna wear a liquid lipstick that is matte and that is quite drying, like the Lime Creme Velveteens. And uh, it's really nice for that too, because it's just prep your, your lips very nicely. Just a good lip mask. Okay, that's it for me, folks. This, these were my favorites in skincare for 2020. Definitely a very good year for me because I started interested in skincare. I think I'm getting a lot more knowledgeable around it. My skin is not looking the best right now, but it's definitely a journey. I think it's definitely getting in a better, better, better and better place each year. So fingers crossed I managed to get rid of these breakouts. <laughs> Please let me know if you have any questions about any of the products, about skincare in general. I'm happy to meet you in the comment section and we can talk about things. I can try to answer the best I know. Or feel free to comment also some of your favorites for this year in skincare. I would love to know what you enjoyed. And stay tuned for my makeup favorites this year. That's going to be a long one, I think. I don't know how long this one was, but yeah. <laughs> Anyway, as usual, take care of yourself, happy holidays, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.